Hello, the program is Stan the History Man, and I'm your co-host, Dr. Stanley Sandler. Today, I want to talk about money, okay? Money, American money. It's hard to believe that in the United States, in the new United States, we did not have any paper money, any government paper money. Money was printed by banks. So therefore to have a bank charter up until 1862 was a literally a license to print money. So many, many banks, hundreds of banks in the United States printed their own money. And people never knew for sure how good that bank was, how good its money was. As a matter of fact, they would sell these tables across the country, which would list the banks and what their dollar bills were worth or their $5 bills or whatever. And often they would be only accepted at a discount. It was generally accepted opinion in the world, the developed world at that time, that the United States had the world's worst money system. And then, as a matter of fact, even the um, uh, purchasing of government uh, facilities, the uh, payment of government workers, all that did not come through the government. It came through the Bank of the United States, which was basically a private organization, which Andrew Jackson hated and the Jeffersonians hated. That was big business, big money uh, financiers of Wall Street running the country. So they had stopped uh, in eight, the 1840s. They stopped the Bank of the United States. It was set up originally by Alexander Hamilton as a limited joint stock company. And uh, but it was just considered uh, too much a, a creature of Wall Street. Uh, many of the Jeffersonians, particularly Jackson, said they hated folding money. And it's, it's kind of hard to imagine this today, but remember, most Americans did not, it was not as much a money economy nearly as it is today. As a matter of fact, many farmers, for example, would pay their taxes by working on the roads for a few days. You see, they went up to penny money that way. So uh, the carolotic change around and so on uh, was, was acceptable then, or just some change, because uh, there, there's so little use for, uh, for money. So, um, but nonetheless, it was a bad system. And when a bank would fail, then its, it's uh, banknotes would also fail. So uh, this did not change until 1862 with the Lincoln administration that Republicans had earlier promised that if they got in, they would have a federal treasury system. No more Bank of the United States or anything, and no more in the bank notes. They just taxed bank notes out of existence. And so that's where we get the greenbacks that we have today. We can thank the Lincoln administration for that, okay? And for many other things as well. Of course, I'll point out the story doesn't end there though, however. Uh, what about change? You know, the, the change in our pockets, right? What about that, okay? Well, we had good money that way. The, the government the money uh, was the, the mint, the money from the mint was, was very good. As a matter of very high, uh, well, not very high, but a high uh, gold and silver content. As a matter of fact, the expression, get your teeth into it or sink your teeth into it, comes from the idea if you saw a, a gold coin and you weren't sure just how uh, much gold was in it and how much alloy, what it was worth, you bite it. And if your teeth could sink into it a bit, then you know it was really gold. And I suppose the same thing would happen with silver. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. So uh, it was pretty solid. As I say, the, the, uh, we, we got along and then get along very well without paper money until 1862. But the story doesn't end there, as I said. Um, in 18, 1965, um, the Johnson administration said, well, you know, it's caught, go, the price of silver had gone up way up. And so uh, it costs too much to, to uh, mint coins anymore with, with the high silver content that he had. And so Lyndon Johnson presented a bill before Congress or recommended a bill, pushed for a bill that would um, take all the silver content out of our coinage and just give us a, a lead slug with a silver wash. And that's what we have today. Now, Johnson lied. I know it's hard to believe a politician would lie like that, but he did. He said, there's lots of silver anyway. We're just doing this. Never really said why they were doing it. And anyway, it, we can always bring go, go back to silver coins. And also, people won't collect the silver coins. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, first thing that happened when the silver coins went out of circulation, everybody grabbed them. So they could, the corner grocery store, <laughs> filling station, whatever. They got a silver coin, they'd grab it and save it. Okay. And so uh, they're I mean, not worth a lot of money today, but still, they're probably worth two or three times what they what the, the printed uh, value of them is. So, I mean, and you know, it's, we use so little coinage anyway anymore, uh, even things like uh, tolls and all, we just go through with, with special kinds of passes and all. But nonetheless, I just don't like the idea. I, to me, 
a coin is a symbol and paper money too of this United States. It says United States of America on it. It's not a cheap lead wash. You know, if you ever see, a, let's, for example, a quarter on the beach, it's brown. It's just a lead slug. The the silver has washed off with the action of the of the waves. So I wish we had, you know, coinage that looked like the you know was the proud. It's, it's, it's a product of the United States. But I don't suppose that will ever come. So anyway, that's the story in a nutshell of American money. That's Stan the History Man. I'm your host, Dr. Stanley Sandler. Thank you for watching.